How to build a professional looking 3D portfolio with React 3 Fiber Part 3. Hello, today we will create the HTML content with Tailwind, display a custom mouse cursor and add 2D, 3D scroll animations using Framer Motion. What we will do is recreate the HTML interface you can see here, reproduce the menu, the cursor and the scroll animation, so from one section to another, but also fading items, making them appear. We'll start from this starter pack again, but I think it's uh, the last time we start from scratch. We are going to start playing Lego with the room we baked and also the avatar. Go to code, copy and go to Visual Studio Code, git clone and the folder I want to put in, let's name it final. Now we have it, let's open it, run yarn and yarn dev. We now have this moving cube, which means it's ready. For the HTML interface, I decided to go with Tailwind because it's something I like. I know some people don't like Tailwind, it's not mandatory because later we'll use Framer Mission that is a framework agnostic you can use with whatever shoes you make. Let's follow the documentation to install Tailwind CSS with the bit. We already have our project. We need to install our dependencies available here. Yarn add to save dependencies only for development purpose at dash dash dev and paste. Okay, now what we need to do is to run init from Tailwind CSS. Let's do it. Then we need to add in our Tailwind config file uh, this line. Let's go to it. Tailwind config content it means the target where we want to add a, a Tailwind, so the index and the JS file. At the beginning of our CSS file, we need to add those three lines. Index.css, add those lines. Now let's check that it works. Copy this, go to app.jsx, next to the canvas, we can add some HTML. But we have our canvas in front, let's remove it. Oh, this div. Okay, so we have Hello World. It's a big text, so text 3XL, font bold, it's bold, and it's underlined, which means it works. Let's have a look at what content we want to create. If we go to the menu, we have Home, About, Work, and Contact. We will do almost the same, which means four pages. As we don't want to remove every time the canvas and have the content on top of the canvas, we will use scroll controls. We will wrap our content inside and we will use scroll HTML to put all our pages inside. How does it work? We need to wrap everything with scroll controls. Let's put it here and wrap experience inside. We need to import it from dry. We need four pages as we saw and the damping, we can leave it like this. Then we will want to have a scroll container for our HTML. We'll use scroll. And add the prop HTML. Now we can add our content inside. Now let's check if it works. We have hello world on top of the canvas, but I can scroll because of the orbit control catching the scroll. Go to experience. We can just get rid of it. Now I can scroll and uh, the height of the scroll is like four pages, so four times the height of the screen. We will put our content inside a new component we will create. In components, name it interface.jsx. Export const interface. In app, we can get rid of it, import our interface. We want to have four sections full height. Let's create it. Let's first create a component named section. It will take the children's as a prop. It will return an HTML section and the children. Now we will have our four sections. The first one is home. Well, it's about. 
skills, projects, and contact. But we have no CSS, the content is on the top left of the page. Let's fix it. To add CSS with Tailwind, we need to use classes. So use the prop class name and add all the classes you want. Each class refers to a CSS property. To make it easier to make it multi-line, we can use this and back coat. We want it to be full height, full width. We add some padding. We set a max width so it's not uh, on big screen too big. Um, to Excel, we center it automatically with MX Auto. We set it to flex, flex column, and we put the items on the left with item start and justify center to middle all in it. Okay, now we have full height section, but the centering isn't correct. We are missing a wrapper. Here we can go add a div, class name, flex, flex, call, items, center, and we need it to be with uh, full or with screen. And now the section can be too big. We always have space. Let's make it even cleaner. We can create one component per section. Com about section, we'll have a section component and inside add our thing about section. Now let's create our real content for the about. What I prepare is a big title. Hi, I'm Wawa Sensei. Some text below, gray and a bit of margin. Learn how to build 3D apps. And a button, blue background with white text with contact me. Here is what it looks like. Of course, customize it. Now let's jump to the skills section. Inside this section, we will display our skills and languages. I created an array with the different skills we have. So we will loop over them to display some HTML. And same for the language. Of course, put your real skills and languages. Here is what we have. Skills, a title with a block under. We loop through all our skills and we set the skill title. And we have a fake progress bar here with the width defined by the percentage of level you assigned. And the same for the languages. We loop through all items and the progress is the level here. This is what it looks like and we will animate it later. Today we will skip the project section. We will do something fancy in the next tutorial and we will do the contact section. I just created something simple with a title, a form with a name, email, and a message, and then the submit button. So far, what we have now is this section, then the skills, project, it's empty, and contact me. I'm not spending time explaining Tailwind, but just one useful thing is the extension, which is IntelliSense for Tailwind. So if you write stuff, it automatically autocomplete and tell you what CSS is applied, so it's very useful. If you go to extensions, search for Tailwind IntelliSense, you will find it. The library that we will use for animation is the famous Framer Motion. It comes with many options. So either you are doing a duration-based animation based on scroll or on different stuff, it's based on the time, so it's good for fading effects. But for realistic effect, there are spring animations and it's also available with Framer Motion. For example, if we move here, you can see it's a realistic effect, like a real animation, not just uh, fading the value between one another. To install it, it's very easy. Yarn add Framer Motion. But also there is the Motion 3D available that we will use later. So let's install it right now. We have nothing more to do. We can directly use Framer Motion. To use Framer Motion, we need to add motion 
dot the component, but the auto import doesn't work, so I will import it. Motion from Framer Motion. Now, thanks to Motion, I can add some new props to make animation on this section. We will use initial to say it's coming from the, those value. I will say opacity zero, so we will make it fade in and also affect the Y position. We will put it slightly uh, below so it will fade up. Now, what we want to do is to animate it when it's visible on screen. We can use the prop while in view. You can see there are many different options available. And what we will do is opacity one and the Y to zero. If I reload, you can see it fading and it's very fast. This one, I didn't have the time to see it. So let's add some parameters to affect the transition. Let's switch it to a time frame based animation, add transition, set a duration. When you do it, it goes from uh, spring one to time frame based. And we will add a delay so we have time to see it happen. Now let's reload. Hi, I'm Wawa Sensei, it's fading. Same for the second section. Project, it's not a section and contact me too. Perfect. But to add more life to it, we will animate each item independently in top of the section. If we go to the about section, let's say I want to animate this one. I add motion.p. Now I have access to the motion props. I can say initial opacity zero and the Y will say a bit 25. And when it appears while in view, we'll say the opacity to one, the Y to zero. And let's also change the transition to add more delay than the section. So a duration of one, two, but a delay of 1.5. Let's do the same for the button. We can copy all of it motion.button and we'll just increase the delay so items will appear one after the other. Let's reload. Hi, I'm Ora Sensei. I make YouTube videos. Contact me. Let's do the same for the skills. For each skill, we will animate the title and then initial We'll just make it fade in and while in view opacity to one and the transition a duration of one and we will set a delay to one second plus we will add the index multiplied by 0 0.2. What it will do is each skill will show one after the other because the index will increment for each. Let's do the animation for the progress bar. We'll add motion.div. Initial will set the scale x to zero and set the origin x to zero. Then when it's in view, we'll set the scale x to one. And we also add a transition of one and a delay, the same concept. Let's have a look at what we have. Here, if I scroll, it's fading nicely and the progress is fine. But what happens if I come from the bottom? It will play again, but let's stop here and then scroll later. You can see the order is uh, the wrong one because I want it to start from the top to the bottom. But the first items to be in view are the one from the bottom. For this, we can use something named variants on Framer Motion. So what we will do is on the whole uh, container on the main div, we will transform it to a motion.div. We will say while in view and we will name it visible. It's a variant name. And now instead of uh, setting each item based on the while in view, we will define what is named variants. And for the visible variant, we will set, set our style opacity to one. And inside our variant, we can set the transition. So here we can also define our transition. 
we don't need the wide in view anymore. Let's do the same here. So wide in view, we want variance. The variant is visible. We want the scale X to be one and we want that transition. I will write it manually here, scale X and transition. Now, if I go from the top, it works nice. And if I come from the bottom, it plays also from the top. Perfect. Variants are very powerful. You can use multiple variants and use it from the top of your project to inject it on a very uh, low children. We need to do the same for the language. So maybe it's, it will be faster to just copy paste here and languages are here just it's not skill it's lng okay but because uh, the language are below we want to animate them later so set the delay to two so far what do we have skills and then languages nice before jumping to the 3D part, there are two things I want us to do is when we start scrolling, it directly jumps to the second section and then we can scroll. But if I go here and I go to the second, to the first, it also jumps back to the top of the page. We will do it. And just after, we will do the menu. To make it, we will create a custom component. First, I want to know in my project what section we are currently displayed. It will be useful for the 3D also. So section and set section, it means where are we? Are we on the about project contact? Use state of zero. Then we will create on top of scroll controls, a component named scroll manager. We will import when it's created. We will pass it the section and on section change, it will call the set section to update our section. It will be responsible of this. Let's create this component, components, scroll section, uh, scroll manager.jsx. It will take props. It will have section and on section change from the props. Perfect. In our app, we can now use it. I tried different approach to do it. First, we are using use scroll for one reason. It's because we want to have this smooth effect. When we scroll, it smoothly fade in our page. Using a use scroll with a 3D is a very useful. We could use a scroll trigger from JSAP, but it's a bit too much to achieve this result. And we can do it just with the scroll position. But we will use JSAP to make the smooth animation from the first section to the zero and the zero to the one. Maybe let's install it right now. Yarn add JSAP. What we will need is to have the data from use scroll to know where we are currently scrolling and to have access to the container element that scrolls. We will store the last scroll position. We store it in a reference to prevent a re-render. And we will check if we are currently animating to avoid uh, impacting it while we are performing the animation. And by default, let's set it to false. Then we'll use use frame to check our conditions. So are we animating? If we are animating, we won't do nothing, but we will still want to store the last scroll position. So last scroll dot current equal to data scroll dot current. Then if it's not the case, now we can try to add our logic. Let's find what section we are currently in. To do so, we add mat.floor, we check the data.scroll.current multiplied by the number of pages we have as it's um, a percentage of scroll from 0 to 1 
and the number of pages. So we will know at what page we are. So if the current crawl is over the last crawl and the current section is zero and if our current scroll is below the last scroll. But we want it to happen only if we are reaching the first section. To know it, we need to do the current scroll is below one divided by the number of pages minus one. In that case, we call on section change to zero. Okay, so now it will change our section. What we need to do is when the section change, we, we trigger our animation. Let's go on section, we use effect. So we trigger our animation here, but just before here, we need to store the last crawl. If not, it will never work. So let's get back to when the section change. We will trigger a JSAP animation. We will set two. The container is data.l. It's the element returned by uScroll. What we do then is a duration of one. We animate the scroll top by the section multiplied by data.l.client height. It's the total um, height scrollable. To prevent error, we add on start is animating to true and on complete is animating to false. There's the comma missing. Perfect. Let's have a look at what we have. I start scrolling, it automatically scrolled down, but we can see it's not scrolling perfectly. If I scroll down, it's fine. I can scroll as usual. If I go up, then when I reach a certain threshold, it goes back to the first one. It's good, but we need to add a fix. I did some research and I found that the CSS made by use scroll is uh, wrong. Maybe it's because of Tailwind impacting it, but we can add some fix and it's quite easy. When we add uh, scroll controls here with the number of pages, uh, use scroll creates an element made of four times the height of the screen. But for a weird reason, it appears it's like five. But we can fix it by accessing it like data dot fill. And we will add some class to make it sure that it's a, a position at the correct position. We add top to zero and we also add absolute position. So now it really fills the whole screen at the correct spot. Now, if we reload, we start scrolling and it's perfectly aligned on the middle of the screen. If we go to the top, same applies. Let's add the menu button, but thanks to Tailwind, it will be very fast. Let's create next to our Canva a menu component. Go to components, create menu.jsx. What we will need to have access to in menu is to change the section to scroll to it. So on section change equal to set section. Okay. Now let's go to our menu export const menu equal we have access to on section change that we get from the props and we will return some html stuff here nice now we import it and let's code our menu oh we will need another prop is is the menu opened and set if the menu is open. We could have the logic in the menu, but we want to have access to it in the 3D part later to animate the camera. Let's define here a menu, set menu open. By default, it's false. And let's add menu, uh, menu opened. and set menu open. Okay, now in our menu, we have access to it. We can start coding it. 
I created a simple button. I added some logic when the menu is open, it will uh, translate to make it across to be able to close it. Let's add on click, we toggle if the menu is open. Let's have a look at it. We have the button here. If we click, maybe I need to reload. It doesn't call the method, let's see why. Here, it looks like it's correct. And here, oh, menu open, it's menu open. Should be better now. Okay, if I click, it open and close the menu. Now create the menu. I added a fixed width here with a width of 80 uh, when it's open and zero when it's closed. I added transition to make it smoothly transition from uh, 80 to zero. And inside we will position our menu button later. Here we have our menu opening and closing here. Let's create a menu button component. It's just a button with a on-click event and a hover uh, color changing. We will add all our menu button here. We have the about, skills, project, and contact. When we click on it, it will call set section with the number to scroll to. But here it's set section and the prop is name on section change. So it should be this. Now we can go, open it, and change the section just by clicking on it. In the application, let's add a use effect on if the menu open change, uh, if the section change, we will set menu open to false to automatically close the menu. Why it's better to do it in a use effect than on the on click? Because now if we scroll and it automatically scroll, it also close the menu and it works perfectly. Now let's start playing some Lego by adding our uh, scene and our avatar. In the portfolio animation tutorial, we can go to animations, paste it to our public folder. Let's also get the models. We won't need the FBX, it was just for Mixamo, so let's get rid of it. And now let's go to the baking project. It was here, public models. We also need the scene, which is the baked one. And we need the textures. By the way, we also need the components. So we need the office component, source components. Here is the office. And on the animation, we will also need our avatar component. Thanks to React, it's very easy to add components and items from one project to another. Let's go to our experience. Now we just have the cube, but not for long. Let's add an ambient light with an intensity of one and let's load our office component. It doesn't know it because it's freshly added to the project. Do you know it now? No. So I will import it manually. Import office from office. Looks like it's here, but the camera is at the wrong place. Let's change it to zero, three, ten, and a bigger field of view. Looks way better. Nice. I will also change the background color to something bluish, but maybe we'll change it later and later we'll do some animation with the background. Let's position and scale our office, wrap it into a group, choose a position. I ended up with this one. Uh, let's scale it a bit down and slightly rotate it on the Y axis to minus mat dot P on four. We are putting it on the top to animate it to go at the perfect place. How to animate 3D elements with a frame or motion? It's the same concept. Add motion dot. And now we have access to the prop to animate, but we need to import it manually too from frame or motion. Perfect. 
and animate. We will add an animation on the Y. And what we will do is if the section we are currently is zero, then we will put the Z position, the Y position to zero. If it's not the case, we set it to minus one. We will pass the section to the props. Const section equal props. By the way, it's like this. Jump to the app and the experience. Now need the section prop. It's available here. Okay. It doesn't work. This is because we are using Framer Motion import here, while we need Framer Motion 3D for group and 3GS related things. Now, if I reload, we have this. If we scroll, it goes down. Okay, but I'm not happy with the animation. I want to change it. I've showed you before, we can set the transition here and define the configuration, but I want to define a default animation type for all the rest of the thing we will do. And to do so, we can go to the app and wrap everything into a motion group. By the way, it's motion config. And okay, now everything I will uh, set an animation to will have the motion config transition animation set, unless I define it specifically for one item. So. The default one I want is a spring one with a mass of 5, a stiffness of 50, a damping of 50, and a rest delta to 0 0.0001. Of course, have a look uh, to the documentation for the explanation of those parameters and try with different values and see how it reacts. This is way too slow, maybe. I made a mistake. Okay, stiffness is 500. Let's load it. Uh, now it's more dynamic when I move it. Okay, fine. But what I want to do is, I don't want to see this uh, forever. So what I will do is on uh, the 3D models to add a scroll from new scroll. Same as we did for the HTML. So it's scroll alone. We can wrap everything into scroll component. And now, when I will reload, when I scroll, it scrolls too. I don't see it anymore. I have the animation and stuff happen. Okay, now let's have a look at how to, we can make uh, the item scales up and down. As it happened in the office, we need the section in the office too. Go into office, get also uh, the section from the props. Let's import motion from the correct place this time. Uh, Framer motion 3D. And let's have fun here. I decided to just animate some items to make it go from small to, to big size and to have a nice animation like in David Hickoff one. Uh, lava lamp. We can switch to a motion group and we will add an animation. So we'll animate the scale. If the section is zero, it will be one. If it's not the case, it will be zero. And close the animation. We will do it for a lot of item. So what we can do is by default uh, set the scale to zero and animate. I put it just next to it, so if I want to do replace, it will be easier. Let's look first if it works on the lava lamp. If I reload, I can see it's happening, but because it's the smallest object I chose, it's difficult to see, but it works. Let's make it on the rug. Copy, paste, but here it's motion.group while it's a mesh. So I'll just update this. Then where can we do it? We have the Pokemon here, Salamesh, okay, the same. Let's make it on the iMac here, perfect. Then we have uh, the plant, where is it? Here, let's make it on the house plant. 
as well. Be careful to close with motion.group, but automatically it works on my Visual Studio. Hope yours as well. My favorite item, the palm tree, the chair, and that's it for now. I'm not very funny, I'm using the same animation, the same parameters, but of course you can be funnier, animate the position, do whatever uh, fits your, your goals. But keep in mind that we baked the shadows so it can have some weird results. By the way, Copilot told me 0.5 for the scale, but it's not what I wanted, I want zero. That's why it was barely noticeable. So let's change it. Okay, should be better. Now, if I scroll, it disappears, and if I scroll up, you can see it's jumping. So it's a nice effect, I like it. But when I scroll down, the item disappears and the shadows are making it very weird. I, I found a, a quick around to, to this is to fade the texture here. And we can use uh, Frame or Motion too. Now change our texture material to transparent true but the opacity by default will be one. Now we will create some framer motion values. We will have texture opacity. It's equal to motion value of zero by default. We don't want to see it. We also do it on the glass because it's the same. Let's name it glass texture opacity. What we will do is a use effect when the section change. Now what we do is we call animate from framer motion on the texture opacity. If the section is zero, it will set it to one. And if it's uh, another section, the opacity will be zero. That's fine, we don't need extra parameter. And the same for the glass texture opacity. Now what we need to do is to uh, really update on every frame our opacity of the texture. To do it, use frame. And we have access to our texture, so by default it says this. Thank you, uh, Copilot, you know everything. So we have the opacity on our material. We get the value from uh, the frame or motion value using the get method. And we do it for both materials. And now what we have is the item fade in and fade out. It's quite nice, but the glass has an issue because it's not transparent anymore, because here it should be the initial value, which was before 0 0.42, no, not here. Here it's not never one, it's, the maximum should be 0 0.42. And now it looks like this, pretty nice. Let's add the avatar and some more items just to, to go further on the project. Our skill sections, I prepared something very easy. It's a light with floating um, sphere and uh, cube. Just look, I used a mesh distort material from dry. It has a nice effect, you will see it in action. I also used a mesh wobble material. It also have a nice animated effect while doing pretty nothing. And I added the avatar. If the animation is the default one is uh, standing, uh, well, it's standing after and by default it's falling, but later in the project we will make it sit in front of the computer. So it's not very important. Nice. Let's do all the required import and let's look at it. But we have an error because avatar is using Leva and we don't have it. Let's add it to our project. Yarn add Leva. And I want to hide it. So next here we can set Leva and hidden to not see it. And we also want to wrap all this section into a group here and here. I can see it, but it's on the right. We have an issue. I think it's because oh, it's in the other group. This is the problem. It shouldn't be in this office group, but after. Now we can see it in the background. And if we scroll, it's not at the correct position here. Let's look how to make it very aligned with our skills position. We want to have it in the background on the first section and then to go in front of us. To do it, we can add 
a motion group to animate it. And for the animates, we will set the Z position. If it's on the section one, we will set to zero or minus 10. And for the Y, we will use is the section one, so the skills section, we will set it to minus viewport dot height. If it's not the case, we use minus 1.5. Viewport dot height is the very useful one because it's the height of the screen. We get it from use three. Const viewport from use three. So now when we use uh, viewport height, we know it will be perfectly centered based on the height of our screen. Now look how cool it is. We have our character in the background falling and the weird bubble distortion. And when we scroll, it's perfectly centered in our screen. We have this effect, but because it's in a scroll container, we can scroll it and it scroll along and it disappears. So it leaves space for later we add some stuff to our project because we never stop copying David or David, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, you can open the menu and see the camera moves. It adds more connection between the 2D UI and the 3D. Let's do the same. What we will need is to pass the information to the experience if the menu is opened or not add a new prop in our experience let's get this prop value menu opened and as we did for the texture we will use motion value camera position equal to motion value and camera look at it x position then in a use effect when the menu open change, we will animate our values. What do we have here? No copilot, it's not what we want to do. What we want to do is to do animate on the camera position X. If the menu is opened or not, we will set it to minus five or zero. We'll do for look at but instead to uh, look at minus five, we will look at five or keep zero, which was the default value. And in a use frame, we will apply those value. We will need the state and apply it. So what does Copilot say? State.CameraPosition.x equal to CameraPosition.x.get. This is correct. And look at on the x, it's the value and zero, 0 is the default one, perfect. Here, if we apply, it open and transition, but the animation isn't uh, the same motion config that we defined. Maybe it doesn't work with animate. What we will need to do is to pass a third parameter, which will be our config, but I don't want to write it again. What we can do is to create a variable with our config. So let's say here, it will be, our config. Let's create a new file, config.js export const framer motion config equal to this. And now we can use framer motion config that we just created, but we need to import it. It's import from uh, is it here? Yes. Oh, I named it incorrectly. It's framer motion config. Here it is framer motion config and here too. Better now in our experience, we can do the same framer motion config and here too as well. So we have one config available everywhere. We can change it from here. It applies everywhere. Now, if we open the menu or close it, we have that nice effect. Looks pretty cool. Just a bonus before finishing for today, we will add a nice cursor. 
To create it, let's create a new component named cursor. Cursor equal return. OK, let's add it next to anything. Uh, yeah, maybe here. Cursor. And let's code the logic here. I won't code everything here because I already did it in a previous tutorial and I'm using the same component. It's in the Christmas tutorial, I think. Um, let me explain a bit the logic here. The HTML we have is an element fixed that will follow our cursor, but slowly. We have a conditional case when it's all hover, hovering a button. The background will change and it will be a border. If not, it's just a bubble. We are listening to mouse event listener. So when it uh, move, we follow the position smoothly. There's all this logic here where we calculate the distance between our cursor and the previous position to smoothly catch up with the speed. And the only thing I added is if we are hovering a button, it will set the state to hovering a button. So the CSS will change. But I also added if the parent of an element is a button for the menu bars, and also if it's on an input or a text area for the contact form. Let's have a look at what it looks like. Now, if you look, we have this small dot following us. Of course, you can customize it. If it's hover contact me, you can see it's a black uh, circle over. But if I go back, it transforms back to its original state. It works also for the menu button here as well, which adds some um, beautiful experience stuff. If I go to the contact form, same for the name, email and message. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the like button to help the channel grow and gain visibility. I also added YouTube memberships to the channel if ever you want to support my work. I will be forever grateful. Next episode should be the final one to have a complete portfolio. If you want to continue learning and improving your React Free Fiber skills, jump to the next video by clicking here.